in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be God the Father, and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. On this feast of the Most Holy Trinity, we celebrate the God who is revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one community of three persons existing in a relationship of perfect love. Let us pray that the love that unites the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit may inspire us to come closer to God in deeper faith and trust. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth, and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery grant us we pray that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the book of Exodus. With the two tablets of stone in his hands, Moses went up the mountain of Sinai in the early morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in the form of a cloud, and Moses stood with him there. He called on the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. If I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, they are headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins and adopt us as your heritage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You glory and praise for ever. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you glory and praise for evermore. Blessed your glorious holy name. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed to gaze into the depths. To you glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the firmament of firmament of heaven. To you glory and praise for evermore. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned. But whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has, all, has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The television has been a great vehicle in this lockdown world to take us away from the limits of our four walls, the limited engagement we have with the outside world. The television can take us to unimagined places and parts of the world and even out into space. But if for a moment we just stay with this one planet, the awesomeness of nature, of mountains and forests, of rivers and seas can be overwhelming. The beauty of nature can then lead us in our faith to see the wonder of the Creator who is ever giving, ever helping us, and to whom we quite rightly, as we see how He gives so much to us, that we give thanks. God is always giving, giving in the continuous creation creativity is continuous creativity and in not only the beauty of the world but in all of what uh, we see and experience the very breath of life even when it's under threat the mystery of the trinity is the greatest and deepest mystery of our faith and something of the beauty of our faith as well it, Going far beyond the revelation made to Moses, it tells of the intimate life of nature of, and nature of God himself, of, of the Godhead, Father, Son. The Father and the Son love each other, and the Holy Spirit is that love, the love which unites all the persons of the Trinity. And there is a continuous giving of love. Of course, we see that this love overflowing into creation, but even before the world was created, the love of the Godhead was always pointing out beyond itself. And the prophets spoke of the love of God. And then we see this given, given to us in the saving love that God has towards mankind and in the person of Jesus, the Word of God. And so up at the heart of the very nature of God is a loving, giving community, the Holy Trinity. By revealing the mystery of the Trinity, God does much more than give us facts about himself, information about himself. He shows us and tells us about himself because he is love. And again, in Jesus, his very life speaks of God, speaks of the love of God to see me is to see the Father. He wants us, God wants us to love him in return. And then we can be caught up into the very nature and share the very nature of his life. That is the great offering given to us in Jesus as he offers himself that his, uh, in his humanity in sacrifice and to see him is to see the Father, to see the love of Jesus is to see the love of the Father. We accept his offering by accepting Jesus, his only Son, accepting him into our lives. If we believe in Jesus, he will lead us to the Father. No one comes to the Father except by me. And so, through our baptism, we are united with Jesus. We're caught up because we come to become part of, of that circulation of marvellous love, uniting Father, Son and Holy Spirit in the dance of their love. That is so awesome. So awesome that it's almost too difficult to understand, almost becomes meaningless to us. And next, we have some image of that great reality, and that is what the Church is meant to be. It's meant to be an image of of the church of God. The visible church is a community of faith, hope and love that imitates the very nature of God. It must reflect in some degree the community of love and unity that is in the Trinity. That is our task as the people of God. And we become most real in this as we receive the sacrament. And as we connect to the love of God in our prayers. But also it means that we must have that capacity 
of love and generosity. And as members of this Christian community, of the community of the Trinity, we must stir up in one another to love and good works. And that demands a great deal of loving and giving on our part. So Paul appealed to the Corinthians to make the necessary effort. His appeal is relevant to every Christian community today, today even when we are separated from each other. There's a greater need to overflow with that love of God, to convince the world that God is a God of love and that he has come to redeem and save humanity. That is our task. So do be strengthened in your prayers and in your love so that the world can come to know the love of God. Confident in God's love and compassion, let us present our prayers and petitions for ourselves and for our world. We pray for the church, that she may grow in an ever deeper, deeper faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that Christians may be united in a common faith in the Trinity and come closer together, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. And we pray that we may be an example of love and and generosity to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for this nation and for Elizabeth, our Queen, and her government, that they may be guided by justice and peace and for the good of all. We pray for an end of racism and all discrimination, and we pray for those who have been hurt by further discrimination, and we pray for justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends, for those with whom we live and those from whom we are separated, that the love of God may strengthen the bonds which we have together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, particularly those known to us, those affected by the coronavirus, either through um, their own illness or for the care, caring for others. And we particularly pray for those who work in the National Health Service and in our hospitals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those that, who have died, that they may be caught up into the very eternal love of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We pray for the recently departed and for those who see his mind for us at this time for those who died with COVID-19 and other, other illnesses. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. We rejoice in the fellowship of St. Cuthbert and St. Matthias, our patrons and our, with our Blessed Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Father, hear the prayers we make in the power of the Holy Spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is, this is praised by angels and archangels, by cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Yes, Lord, you are holy. You are kind to us and to all. For this we thank you. We thank you above all for your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent him into this world, because people had turned away from you and no longer loved each other. He opened our eyes and our hearts to understand that we are brothers and sisters and that you are Father of us all. He now brings us together to one table and asks us to do what he did. Father, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine by the power of the Holy Spirit and make them holy. Change them for us into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. On the night before he died for us, he had suffered for the last time with his disciples. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, he took a chalice of wine, he gave me thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. God our Father, we remember with joy all that Jesus did to save us. In this holy sacrifice which he gave as a gift to his church, we remember his death and resurrection. Father in heaven, accept us together with your beloved Son. He willingly died for us, but you raised him to life again. Jesus now lives with you in glory, but is also here on earth among us. One day he will come in glory, and in his kingdom there will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. Father in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and blood of Christ at this table, and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred meal, give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember Francis the Pope, Jonathan our Bishop, and all other bishops. Help all who follow Jesus to work for peace and bring happiness to others. Bring us all at last, together with Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with St. Cuthbert and St. Matthias, our patrons, and all the saints, to live with you and to be one with Christ in heaven, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since you are children of God, God has sent you into your God sent into your hearts the Spirit of His Son, the Spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul, as we confess your eternal hope, eternally holy, Trini holy Trinity and undivided unity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.